Okay guys, we're back again, and now we're going to dig a little bit deeper into maps, and this time we're going to use a uh, United States map. Okay, and we're going to also look at some case studies, some projects that Mike Worth Art has done um, where we've really taken advantage of maps and why we did them. So what we're going to do to sort of get started first is I showed in the last video how we would go to Wikimedia Commons um, to download SVG maps. Um, the greatest thing about these maps is that they are vector. You can make them any size, and you also have control over the specific territory. So you can see as I roll over, each state is highlighted, right? And I can even sort of see, like for example, I roll over Michigan, and you can see the Upper Peninsula and this small little area here are highlighted accurately, which is really great. So this is a great place to start when you have to do a map project. You know, there's no inaccuracy from translation from one to the other, but um, we, uh, we are using a different kind of projection here. I believe that this is a uh, Mercator conical projection. Um, I might be wrong on this, forgive me. But um, as you can see, the difference is in our first map, which was a cylindrical, uh, a Miller cylindrical, we don't have that straight line at the top of the United States. I think in this case, um, because we're, uh, we're showing just the US, we can do this. It's, it's not as common, but it's okay that we can do this for our maps. In fact, this is the map that I like to use um, when I do create infographics for this. And as you notice on the bottom, we have Alaska and Hawaii sort of inside these shapes identifying that they're inaccurately placed. Obviously, this would be Alaska and Hawaii would be in Mexico right now. Um, so that is something that we sort of have to take into account. Okay, so with this kind of map, um, we can sort of analyze different kinds of maps that we've seen in the past. So, for example, the most famous type of map that we see is a United States election map. So if we were to pull one of those up here, um, and look up, let's see here, yeah, let's look up the 2008 election map. Okay, I'm getting bombarded with ads here. Fantastic. Let's see if we can pull something up better here. All right, so here is the 2008 election map. And as you can see, um, the most common thing here um, is we're seeing colors used in an, in an effective way. So color is a very important thing to use in maps, and identifying a color structure or color system is really important. So as you can see here, in the U.S. we have a two-party system. Blue is Democrat, red is Republican. So you can see that these are the states that went for uh, John McCain and uh, then President, well, um, candidate Senator Obama. Okay, at the time. And it's essentially the same map as what we're using here. Now, the beauty of the SVG map is that we can let me take this here for a second and bring it into our space. Is that we can recreate this map in our space because with SVGs, all we need to do is click on a particular state and then it will either change color or do what we want to it stylistically. So, as you can see, I can grab all the states. I'm doing a group selection by clicking and holding the shift key at the same time. And I can grab all the states that um, President Obama won um, in the 2008 election. And then instantly, all at once, we're going to change these to blue and then um, do the same thing for John McCain. Okay, so it looks like the president took all of the Northeast, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, we're going to have to zoom in here tight to get some of these other places. Yes, he did, in fact, take Maryland and Delaware and New Jersey. Okay, so what we can do here now is we can use the eyedropper and we can grab that color. Okay, so you now can see, kablam, we have now showing all the states that the president took. Okay. Now, of course, we are going to have to add state names because they're not here. And it's a good idea because, you know, you can't be too obvious in the infographic business. You know, you'd hope that everybody would know which state is which, but not everybody does. So we just want to make sure that we have all that stuff included. And um, so that's uh, an important thing. But here, let's now add all the other states. All right. And I'm going to show you a nice little trick here. Instead of selecting all the states, um, uh, one at a time like I did for the first round. We're going to go up to where it says select. Well, first we're going to select uh, Montana up here. Boom. 
Okay, and then we're going to go to select and then uh, same and then fill color. Okay, so what this is going to do is this is going to select all of the gray states. Those are the remaining kinds of states. So we select all those up oh, and it looks like DC, I believe that DC went to the president. So we'll unselect that. And then all at once, boom, okay, we see our red states. And we'll make sure that we turn DC blue. Okay, so 2012 uh, election is coming up soon in November, and there's going to be lots of mapping projects out there and all sorts of things going on. So this is a great example. If you're just looking to get started making maps, this is a great type of map to jump in. In fact, if you look at the sort of contemporary history of infographics, the 2008 election, I would say, is you could credit with really being the, the explosion point of infographics. Because all of a sudden, great mapping projects started coming out. Because people wanted to see the election. Not just study the numbers, but actually see what it was that was going on. And another great thing is, let me just get rid of that for a second. Um, I'm going to add some, some borders here, OK? Another thing is, a lot of these SVG maps do come with extra extraneous things. Like, I don't always love those lines that show up um, at the bottom. I usually tend to delete them. Uh, but I'm going to add a white border um, to the outline. You can see here now we have really strong borders that identify all of the different states in their different places. So this is a fantastic way to sort of talk about, um, you know, a narrative story here, a data narrative, which is the election, right? We can see how those things get broken down. So we're just going to take an exploration moment here, and we're going to look at historic election maps. And this is something that I've always found fascinating. Uh, let's see. Oh, the 270 to win website may have it. This was a website that came out during the 2008 election. Yeah, okay, cool. And you can see... Um, these are the different, well, this is the current map. This is sort of showing what the, the current map is looking like. Let me zoom that so you can see. All right? You can see that there is quite a few uh, toss-up states, but there are states that are sort of already polling um, to show that either the president or um, uh, former Governor Mitt Romney may have, in fact, uh, clinched those particular states. Um, North Carolina is there. That's my state. It's where the convention's held. But if you notice here, it says select year. And we can go back in time. And this is like really fascinating. So you can see here, this is showing all the states um, like we just drew on our map. And you can see here that Nebraska is purple, right? It's sort of showing that like the state went, um, had a good mixture. All right, 2004, right? You can see the election between John Kerry and um, former President George W. Bush. The 2000 election, right? A little bit of a different looking playing field. 1996, right, Clinton, 92, okay, and all the way back in time, all right, look at that, 1984, oh my gosh, Ronald Reagan sweeping, 1980, all right, defeating Jimmy Carter, okay, and you can really go back in time, and this is interesting, as you get further and further back, look, we can go all the way back, 1789, Look at this, right? The rest of the map is, is, is sort of this, you know, taupe color, and the country is not yet expanded to the West. So seeing this in context is very interesting because you get to see the history of the nation sort of unfold in these different breakdowns, All right? So look at these different elections sort of opening up. And notice we got a lot more colors. Back then, we didn't have a two-party system, so things were much more open to other candidates. So look at this here. You can see John Adams, right? Um, not taking all of the states or the majority of them, but still showing um, a higher count in the Electoral College, right? Look at so the Aaron Burr, right? You know what he's famous for. So you can see these different sort of things opening up and different candidates running from different parties at different moments. So this is a very interesting way to approach mapping, right? To sort of think about an election, the history of our elections through a map. So right here, maps are telling stories. They allow us to see something as it unfolds. So I promised a case study. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to Mike Worth Art. And I'm going to show you some of the maps. As you can see, i got a lot of maps on my, my page here that deal with different things. And one of my favorite projects to work on a map is this, the history of the US flag. 
and let's zoom this in here. Okay, what I want you to see is this is the same map that I showed you before. And what I did was obviously the purpose of this infographic is to tell the story of the United States from the perspective of the flag. Okay, so as you can see in the graphic, we start with the Grand Union, the, um, uh, the continental colors, and we go all the way around. And we're showing each moment that the flag was officially changed. Right? And you can see even here in the, the time of the Civil War, right? They never removed stars, right? They kept them still a part of the Union and all the way back around. But map-wise, you can see that I wanted to show really the sort of the history of the nation. Now you can argue that it could be confusing because we do have red and blue on here, and those mean those mean things very differently today. But I chose to use the red and blue spectrum, sort of going from from way back when to now, right, and sort of the the, the current history, with the last two states, Alaska and Hawaii, being added there. Now this graphic may not change uh, until some other territories decide to become a part of the United States, but that may never happen. Um, but I wanted you guys to sort of see here, this is uh, how, from looking at the 270 to Win project and other things historically, this is where I got that inspiration. I'm, I'm very inspired by the fact that we can see the nation unfold through, our, through the map, right? That we sort of went through this westerly migration and how all these different states and ter territories unfolded and became a part of the nation. So let's just also back up here. I'm going to show you another. Oh, this is another thing that I did here that I thought was very interesting. Is uh, in the flag, you can see that each stripe, of course, we know represents the colonies. So I actually typed in the colony names. And then I typed in the, um, the stars, right, as sort of how they became states in order, going from left to right um, and top to bottom, right? Obviously, with Delaware being the first state. If you've ever driven through Delaware or seen a license plate, from Delaware, they claim always being the first state. Okay, so let's take a look at something though that uh, map-wise um, that was a lot of fun, this project, um, that wasn't first a map but then became a map based on data. So this is the best beer in America map that I made with, uh, with Rick Like um, from Like to Drink and Pints or Prostates um, back in, in 2008. It's when we published it, but we started it in 2007. And what this is, this map, is it is a representation of data that we processed from the Great American Beer Fest. So the Great American Beer Fest has been going on since 1987. And you can see down here another critical thing in maps is that we have a legend. Okay, so you can see the legend is listed down there on the bottom. Let me scroll that back up here so you can see it. There we go. Okay. And we have a color system um, that shows most to least. Okay. And what this is, is at the Great American Beer Fest, you bring your beer. If it wins a medal, um, then, you know, that's awesome. There's gold, silver, bronze, and, you know, taster's choice and all this great stuff. Tons of ways to win medals for your beer. Um, but what we wanted to do was we wanted to see the information in a different way, right? Obviously, we have on the side here, which is the obvious, top beers, top breweries, and that's one way to see the data. But what we found is that we looked up where all the breweries were from, and we thought, hey, you know, let's, let's think about here really where the best beer comes from. Now, of course, there's breweries that are located in one state but are really from another state originally, so there's lots of ways to sort of argue the point. But as you can see, um, we figured out where all of the different states were, uh, were located, all the breweries were located in each state, and... This is the representation of it. So I like to do this little sort of thing here, and this sort of tests my color system. It's called the squint test. And what you do is you squint your eyes and you look at a design through your eyelashes. And what happens when you do that is elements that are really strong, that have great contrast and you know, great hierarchy in terms of visualization, um, really still pop out, right? They really pop off the page. You're not bothered by some of the sort of mid-level or low-level um, strength items. So if you do that, you can see instantly that we're seeing California, Colorado, Wisconsin, Texas, Oregon, Washington, Missouri, Pennsylvania, New York, some of the other ones, it starts to fade from there. But those items are really popping off the page. So we wanted that to be there. Now, one of the things that we learned in making this map is that of course, people love beer. They love to learn and geek out about beer. 
but that people have state love. State love is a huge thing um, in terms of appeal for infographics. So all my marketing folks out there, that's something to write down, is state love, right? When you make a map and you're talking about something with data, people are instantly going to look for their state, okay? So I am originally a New Yorker, um, New Yorker. I should sort of talk with my, my original accent, but now I live in North Carolina. So I'm sort of connected to those two states. So I'm looking and I'm really happy because New York is representing, right? We've got 98 medals. This is as of 2008, of course. It's gone up. And in North Carolina, not so much. We're in a very low tier with 18. And then also, you look at West Virginia and they got nothing, right? North Dakota, one medal, Oklahoma. There's some low-end states there that are not really representing. So state love, right? People connect to that instantly and they're like, ooh, how's my state doing? And then maybe, you know, they have a rivalry with another state and they're like, oh, we're beating them. So I know people in Oregon and Washington, Seattle and Portland people are constantly sort of, you know, er with each other because the rest of the nation seems to get both cities mixed up. Um, and you can see Oregon is clearly in the lead with 170 medals as of 2008. So our color system um, showing intensity, right? This is, you could call this a heat map or an intensity map where we've plotted the data um, relates to the color spectrum that we have in our legend. So obviously a map does need a legend. We did have to identify the states. Um, in this case, we went and we used um, the full names. You can use the abbreviations if you wish. But even so, some people get mixed up with the A's, right? They get Arkansas, Alaska, those things mixed up, okay? So it's something to just be really weary of, right? To understand people's um, literacy and aptitude. But here, again, state love. It's that great entrance point that comes in. So we added a little bit of a 3D texture to the map. You can see that it's sort of raised off. Um, I did this sort of, you know, outline effect so that it was, you know, really clear, the graphic. And then we added this wood grain texture, obviously, to sort of look like a bar top um, to go along with the project. So um, this is a, a great example that's different than the election map, right? We're not dealing with Democrats and Republicans. Um, is identification, but we're dealing with a, a custom color system that shows intensity, okay? All right, one more case study. This was a fun map that we made, <clears throat> and this map deals specifically with cornbread. Yes, cornbread. So this was a map that I just recently did for um, Edible Charlotte, which is a magazine that just came out. Edible is a nationwide magazine, but we now have um, a branch of it here in um, Charlotte, North Carolina. And this was their inaugural issue. And they did a whole thing on cornbread. And if you live in the South or you live in the Northeast, cornbread is a huge thing. There may be other cornbread um, uh, novelties around, but this was sort of part of our data set. Okay. So what this uh, map does, it doesn't necessarily... Uh, use color as a way to identify differentiations in states, but it's a plotted map, okay? And what that means is we have plotted points, and we used a common um, a, a symbol here, which is the star. Now, stars are generally used to represent capitals, but in our case, we use them to represent special locations. So you can see here, this is the United States of cornbread. We have mapped all of the different types of cornbread, and we've even got some that go off the map, right? You can see, obviously, Arkansas didn't make the map because of proximity, but we point to it, right? We talk about Ozark corn pones and tortillas coming from Mexico, arepas coming from Venezuela, maquiqui roti from India, and polenta, of course, from northern Italy. But these are different areas where um, cornbread types are from, right? And we're using this little sort of you know, blocky um, speech bubble or blocky pop-out or breakout bubble. And then inside is an icon that we use to represent either the, the shape of the item or if it's cooked in a specific type of pan, right? That's the thing that sort of differentiates um, different types of maps, okay? So this is uh, the last case study that I want to show you guys, but it shows you different approaches to maps. Now, in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you some visual techniques and things that you can do to really spice up maps. And you can see here I've added a cornbread texture, actually, to the map itself. Uh -huh. And then in the background, I used a, uh, a watercolor, a nice wash, just to sort of give it a soft and you know, creative, artistic feel. So you can stay tuned, and we're going to talk about some nice visual effects and treatments for maps coming up. Hope you enjoyed it.